Rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part 1, please make sure you support us by sharing and subscribing. Account 1. I live in rural Wisconsin, surrounded by corn, marsh, the works. I remember I was in my teens, outside at dusk with my parents, but we were all doing our own thing. Suddenly a woman's voice yells, help me, from the woods beside our house. Just loud enough to hear, but quiet enough for me to second guess what I heard. My mom and dad both turned to look at me like, you heard that too, right? Mom starts screaming, do you need help? Where are you? It's moved from dusk to pitch black now, and the hair stood up on my neck because it got too quiet. Mom wanted to keep yelling, but Dad just got up from his chair and said, Inside, I think that's one of the only times I've seen her listen to him. Account 2. Dark, foggy early morning. Walking alone on an unpaved little road through some woods, I see something coming out of the fog. A grown man skipping like a little schoolgirl. When he sees me, he stops. I do not make eye contact. It was the janitor at my school. Account 3. My town is definitely starting to become more into the city type. But when I moved to the town, it was really rural. I used to live by the cemetery, and I always remembered that the cemetery smelled of rot. But I remembered that I used to walk around the cemetery when I was like 10 and sing happy birthday to the dead people because it had their birthday on the gravestone. I also used to pick flowers for the dead on their birthday and leave it on their grave. The weirdest experience I had was finding a dead squirrel on one of the graves, but in actuality, I was the weird thing about that town because I would spend my summer and weekends in the cemetery. Account four. I was in Northern Wisconsin with my family as a kid. While I was up there, I went on a little hike with my brother and dad just sort of going through some woods, ended up emerging from them onto someone's property, and the dude there saw us, came up with his kid and asked the obvious, uh, what you doing on my property? My dad just apologized and said we were hiking and that he shouldn't have been so careless. We went back quickly and while the encounter was odd, it didn't feel tense or anything, my brother and I also learned a good lesson about respecting private property. However, dude we encountered was apparently not satisfied. I get it to some degree. If I lived outside an urban area, I'd be sus too if someone emerges from the forest onto my property. Things got weird though. The guy we encountered actually got some goon who either worked for or was related to him to track us back to our cabin. About five minutes after we got back and started to make lunch, this goon literally waltz inside the cabin and begins to talk about how we were caught trespassing. He wasn't yelling or angry or anything, but it was still pretty jarring having some camo-wearing guy that you've never seen before to just barge into your grandparents' house. He didn't have a lot of time to say much because our grandparents owned a few guns. Mostly antiques, though. And sure enough, one got pulled on him. Our grandma held this guy up and actually apologized again for the prior instance of trespassing. Then she started to yell at him, though, for following us, trespassing on our property and straight up coming inside uninvited. And then he left, was a really weird encounter. I've talked to my dad and brother about it on occasion though, so it wasn't a dream or my imagination. Either way, don't trespass. That's the lesson I learned, Edit. A lot of people are speculating that we stumbled on drugs or something and TBH, I find that unlikely. The guy that talked to my dad gave his name. I certainly don't remember it though. And again, had his own son with him. I think it's more likely we pissed off someone who values property and privacy, and they overreacted greatly. Regardless, as others have noted, if you find yourself in a similar situation, remain polite, apologize, and get the fuck out. Account 5. The blood-curdling scream of something being killed by coyotes, then all of a sudden it stops, and there's dead silence. Just a few weeks ago, just had a black snake wrapped on my outside doorknob when I opened it. I guess it was trying to get to the nest of flycatchers beneath the porch roof. Account 6. Australia has a reputation for scary animals, but people don't ever talk about the sounds you hear. The cutest, most fluffy, sweet-faced little animals make demon noises in the dark. Our birds scream, possums sound horror movie noises, 
Koalas sound like giant monsters. All of these are completely harmless. Generally, the dangerous animals are, coincidentally, the ones you can't hear. Account 7. I've done a job for a few years now, noise monitoring, generally of coal mines, in rural areas, obviously. My first night on the job when I was 18, I was out by myself quietly listening to the mine from a dirt road near a farm property. Next minute I hear what sounds like a woman scream over and over and over. Didn't really know what to do, but noted it down as screaming and fucked off. When my boss read my notes, he said, Oh yeah, there's an owl that sounds like that. A fucking owl indistinguishable from a human scream. Account 8. Used to live in rural Philippines in a tiny fishing village in Tinambacan. Right next to our house was a fenced, off lot that had been overgrown and a really broken down house. It always looked really creepy at night and kids in the neighborhood told me it was haunted. From our rooftop, you could look into the lot. One night I was looking at it and I saw a strange blue glow coming from inside and shadows moving across the windows. I couldn't place it at all and didn't hear any noise, no people speaking or any indication of what was causing it. Really scared me. I brought it up to my family and they told me drag queens were squatting there overnight so that they could attend a nearby disco. So that was relieving. Account 9. A friend of mine lived in a semi-rural area growing up. One night the cops knocked on her door and warned her that they were looking for a possibly violent fugitive. Told her they'd check her property and that she should lock up and be wary. It wasn't until some time later that she found out the full story. The fugitive had been caught sexually assaulting a horse in a local stable. In the ensuing panic, the horse's leg was broken and the man got away. He was found, two days later, hiding in a stormwater drain. Account 10. Grew up in a very rural area of Kentucky, on a property that was about 75 combined acres of woods and empty fields, out a dead end, one lane road. One night when I was a kid, I was sent to take the trash out to the dumpster after dark. The dumpster was already at the bottom of the driveway. About the time I reached the dumpster, I heard the most blood-curdling scream I have ever heard, like a woman was being brutally murdered right in my ear. I flew back to the house and had a full-on come apart, crying and telling my dad to get a gun. Fox screams will make your blood run cold. Account 11. Live out in the country, realized one night that we never got the mail that day, so I walked out to the road to get it. No moon that night, so it was pitch black, just the sound of crickets and tree frogs. As I'm walking back up the driveway, I hear my husband whistling from the direction it's coming from. It seems he walked out the back door and was coming around the side of the house towards me. I didn't know why and didn't bother to ask. I just went up on the porch and back in the front door. Just then my husband came out of the bathroom. I still get freaked out a little when I think about it. It was 100. A human whistling a tune and both humans were in the house. Account 12. Depending on the beholder, this is a ballsy or stupid story I can throw in the mix of all these close animal encounters on here. I lived out of a camper shell I built on the back of a small Japanese pickup I own. Did this with some breaks of couch surfing in between for about eight to five months, east to west coast and lots of places in between. I was doing some work on a guy's house in Sonora, California. He and his family were the coolest of Mormons and they actually offered that I just park anywhere I like on their eight acres of property until we got their house finished up to be put on the market. Having a stable campsite, I changed things up and would sleep in my hammock beside my truck. Weather was perfect that time of year. The guy's wife saw me in my hammock on the first morning and made it a point to tell me about the two goats they had lost to a mountain lion the year prior. One day at dusk, while I was there, she and her son got a mountain lion walking up the driveway on video. It was bad. I knew the risk, but figured it's far too scared of human smells and lights and sounds to ever realistically mean problems for me, which is the case for 99 of those cats. Just be noisy before bed and you're set. After lights out at night, I'd sit and browse the web for a while in the cab of my truck, and I could charge my electronics from the inverter I had in there, I wasn't done going in and out of the camper shell in the bed of my truck. 
so I had left both tailgate and hatch wide open. It was well into the night. I'm just reading away, and all of the sudden my entire truck lurches from a dip in the rear end. Something's in the back of my truck. I've shuttled people around back there, and I have a good sense of how the rear leaf springs do under weight in this truck because I've owned it for so long, and it was as if a slightly less than or equal to 200-pound man plopped his ass on my tailgate. Oh, shit. First thought is, it's a person. Didn't think it at the time, but there is no way it's a person. I'm parked on crushed gravel that gives away the approach of anything putting body weight on it. Unless this person was being intentionally sneaky, but that gets thrown to the wind with the jump onto the tailgate. So it wasn't a dude. A useless wide-eyed check of my mirrors sent me thinking of a better plan. I'm not getting out of the cab. Manually lock both doors. Old truck. My keys are already on accessory to run charging. So less than an eighth of a turn of the key and the truck is running. I rev the thing in accordance with my heart rate, but I don't blast the horn because I don't want to wake this family and their five young kids up. Plan works, and the truck springs back up unweighted. The noise did scare the cat, but a mountain lion at night did pounce into the back of my truck. I shut the truck off and waited things out a good while. All clear. The ballsy, stupid part comes now. I was 21. This was my adventure I had dreamed about since I was a kid. I don't have wild behaviors. But I honestly feel all but dead inside until I face some kind of challenge or adversity and I'll come alive. Grew up watching too many movies or something. All my favorites share the common theme. Anyway, I didn't want to back down. Slight dehydration was on my side. And I knew my piss was going to smell a little stronger because of it. I pissed all over the trees my hammock was strapped to, and underneath and in a little sea bear circle around the hammock itself, and I did that every night for the next two weeks with no problem until we finished the job. It was ballsy then, but it's stupid now. The reality, though, is that anyone who sleeps outdoors in their habitat for any amount of days more than one out of the year has slept in a mountain lion's territory, likely under one. In terms of hillside, not trees, the consensus around them is that they see you, you don't see them. Could have told that story so much shorter. But it's true, and storytelling is a lot of fun. This ask turned into campfire stories quick. Account 13. My family lives in an old farmhouse. Surrounded by a lake, field, and forest. No neighbors nearby. No reason for outsiders being near. It's a dead-end road. This happened to my aunt when she was dog-sitting. She wakes up in the middle of the night to some notices. Our dog was less than helpful guard dog, and she didn't alert her at all. Aunt sees several people outside with flashlights walking around the yard. She panics and immediately puts on all the lights, and the people escape. She called the cops, but it would have taken them an hour to get there. Nothing was taken, but sure scared the hell out of my aunt. Account 14. My uncle used live way out in the country on a plot he said was a little less than eight acres. His closest neighbors weren't terribly far away, within quick driving distance, but also just far enough that walking wasn't very viable. Anyways, I spent my eighth grade summer there, and he had one story that scared the shit out of me back then. He had an array of animals on the farm, Three hunting dogs, pigeons, dozens of chickens, other various birds, a few goats, and a lone horse. And every night he would make his rounds through his farm just to make sure everybody was where they were supposed to be, and that everything was locked up. One night as he's walking back to his house, his dogs start going wild. He initially doesn't give care to it, and continues on his way, but his dogs are just relentlessly barking. He points his flashlight around and doesn't see anything. He gets to the back door of his house, his dog still barking. And so he turns around one last time, way out in his fields he says he does see what looks like a moving shadow. He automatically assumes it's a coyote or some other wild animal and just goes inside. The next night as he goes out to make his rounds, he said he was immediately stopped as he spotted some sort of shadowy figure just a little distance away from his barn. He didn't say anything, but he did take out his gun. Again, his initial thought was maybe a coyote trying to get his chickens. However, as he took a few steps, he said the figure suddenly stood up, almost human-like, and ran into the field, covered in darkness. He said he was so startled he just froze for a moment before yelling out, Hey! He didn't give chase to whatever or whoever it was. He did say that for about a week after,
His dogs would go ballistic at night, but he never saw the figure again. When he was telling me the story, he said that it probably could have just been a transient, but I don't know. The dude lived in the middle of nowhere and had to drive like 40 minutes to shop. Seems incredibly bizarre for some random homeless to even be in that area. He said it could have also been a black bear, but I don't know either. He wasn't even close to the kind of area I would think black bears inhabit. Dude lived in a rural country farming area, not anywhere remotely close to mountains, forests, etc. Account 15. My grandparents' cottage is in Turkish Mediterranean region, and it lies in lemon and orange trees. We have two close neighbors and other settlements are quite far, and the two neighbors aren't present since it's summer, and they moved to uplands which is cooler. Now, the cottage is old, really old. It was built on a large rock, and it has no toilets inside. Toilet is about 20 meters outside in the south like Shrek's. Well, I had to use it in the middle of the night, and there is no light. I had to navigate using moonlight, and there's no light in the toilet either. You wouldn't know what's inside until your eyes gets used to the dark. When I was in, I heard footsteps or something crawling outside because dry grass was making noise. Whatever it is, approach to the door and stand there for solid 20 minutes. Now, since where I stayed was way secluded, and the closest town was one hour of driving, and in the fields we have seen wild boars, snakes, and wild dogs too. I stayed in there for an hour after the animal left and rushed out to home, but my legs were asleep. Crawled until I could walk again. I was 12 or 13 at that time. 